On today's episode, yes, the news will be here, but we are talking about our values. We are talking about our individual bus players that we are a little bit nervous to take at their current ADP and some best ball breakdown. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Leave us a comment. Let us know who your value players are in this year's fantasy football draft and enjoy the video. Listen up, everybody. Your fantasy football drafts are coming. It's time to show your league what puny and pathetic trash bags they truly are. The ultimate draft kit from the fantasy footballers is the easiest way to annihilate them. Tiered rankings, full projections, sleepers, breakouts, it's got it all. Go to ultimatedraftkit.com and secure yours immediately. I said do it now! Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. I think it's football time. Is it? <laughs> Is that why you were laughing? I got caught uh, a little bit off guard. It's fine. I don't. I don't really want it. I don't want it till it's uh, till All it right. counts, Mike. Oh man, Andy doesn't want Packers, Chiefs, 49ers, Texans. Wait, wait, wait. 49ers? Yes. Okay, it's football time. You're supposed to see Trey Lance, right? That's why it's football time. Okay, that that is what makes it football time for Mike. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Wait, wait, wait. Is is, uh, is Romeo Dobbs playing tonight? Oh, no, don't he? I believe he is. Oh, it's football time. Oh, his, sure. his average draft position just rose a full round, thanks to you mentioning his name. It's preseason time. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> is uh, Isaiah Pacheco playing tonight? Probably. Did, yeah, did all right. Let's go. <laughs> it's football time. All right, we're back. We're back. It's cut down time. For a lot no, of these teams. That's true. Yeah. Sorry. Why well, you got to make it sad? Sorry. sorry no, fellas. I was just talking <laughs> sorry, about Kenyon Drake. You no longer have a job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have bus picks on today's show. See, I got to I gotta bring it down to the negative. Mm, there we go. Picking busts. We have value picks on today's show. We have best ball breakdown, NFL news to cover, and some pretty big news to cover. Uh, a few reminders at the top. If you're drafting in the next couple of weeks, avail yourself of the ultimate draft kit. Uh, you yow, can find yow, that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike, at <laughs> ultimatedraftkit.com. And then the Megala Bowl tournament is now open. It's the largest fantasy football league. All of our listeners uh, in different 12-person leagues heading to one singular Megala Bowl champion. Check that out at megalabowl.com. News and notes from around the league. Well, the big news breaking uh, yesterday and today, the Cowboys, left tackle Tyrone Smith. Mm. It's not looking good. Hamstring tore, came off the bone, which made it, what, an avulsion fracture of the knee. Yuck. He has to have surgery. That's a lot of big words that I don't know. Yeah, this is bad. He's out indefinitely. Another way to put that is for the relevant season. Uh, he's not going to be playing anytime before December if a miracle happens. So you have one of the best tackles in all of pro football who statistically it makes a massive difference on how the Cowboys offense functions. The pressure percentage goes up 5% when he's not on the field. Uh, the sack percentage nearly doubles. The yards per attempt for the running back position, which is maybe the biggest point here, it goes from five a carry to four a carry, just losing Tyrone Smith. Yeah, and that's you know that's talking about someone that you can blame it on the injury or whatever. But it wasn't like Zeke was very efficient last year. So if you have now a worse offensive line, this is an offensive line that you know used to be as good as it gets. They that was the heart and soul of this team. Uh, we can't look at it that way anymore. I mean, this is a almost now with without Smith, this is a weakness on this roster. Well, they'll have a Smith in his place. That, okay, that's true. That's I believe true. it's Tyler Smith that will be yeah, filling it, in. It's, like, it's got most of the same letters. We should be all right. Maybe here. The, the offensive, or I mean, the defensive players will just think it's the same Smith. Yeah, I mean, we we but probably not. 
I don't think we've gotten, you know, because this is fresh. Like this, this started breaking last night. I don't think we've got an update of what the what their plan is for who's going to go where. Um, you know, because uh, like looking at our lads, Tyler Smith was playing guard or was slotted in for them on the depth chart. First who's, round rookie. Yeah, who's going to go where? Uh, that is TBD. But yeah, I, it was it this, was rumored. This sucks. Yeah, it was this rumored sucks a lot. Uh, Michael Gallup though will avoid the reserve PUP list. Probably not ready for week one, but also not going to miss four games. Right. That's that's it. So you would assume if they're not putting him on the PUP, uh, you will see him before week five. Otherwise, they should yeah. have put him on the Which has happened. PUP. I say we've we've made those assumptions before. Is Michael Gallup being ignored for fantasy players? Uh, it's it's hard because the we ha we didn't know with the ACL because the, these ACL injuries are all over the place and Michael Gallup's was about as late as it can get. I mean, it was yeah, it was very end of the season, and so the, the fact that he's even close to ready is just it's shocking. Where you, you Robert Woods was kind of in the middle of the season, seems like he's going to be back. And then you have other players who are still not even in full, or they're not fully participating in practice. So over, if he's healthy, then yeah, he would be overlooked because he he just got the contract. He profiles to be the the number two pass catcher for. Dak in this offense but again I just the ACL injuries are very scary is there a world where Michael Gallup is more valuable than CD Lamb in a dynasty league no no not in a dynasty no. league no not at all I don't I don't think that exists CD Lamb is so young is a better talent I mean the world exists like oh CD Lamb has a career ending injury but outside of uh, outside of something like that I can't imagine Gallup being more valuable in dynasty Okay, yeah, there he's twenty three. Gallup is twenty six. Um, it's funny because I think, at least so far through their careers, Gallup has made more impressive plays to me. Kadarius Tony didn't participate in team drills on Wednesday, believed to be a hamstring injury. This goes along with the off season knee scope. Uh, he also goes along with last season when, you know, when he was on the field, he was electric. He he looked like he had, you know, very unique quick twitch skill set that we don't see very often, right? Like when an yes. NFL player looks significantly better than other NFL players at the same position doing certain things, that is the elite of the elite, and yet we might not get to enjoy watching that at any read, point. Let me read you a couple things. Uh, this is from, Please do. from Kadarius Tony's uh, profile on the fantasy footballers. Week six, probable, leg, seven, out, ankle. Uh, you got week 12 out quad, you have week, uh, 14 out oblique. You have week, uh, 15 out. Well, that was COVID, uh, week 17 out shoulder. Now we're adding hamstring and knee scope. This is, it's, it's, it's a full hard. skeleton. It's hard. Yeah. It's, it's like head, shoulders, knees and toes, Yeah, yeah. knees and toes. We are. <laughs> yeah. Cause you, you doubled up. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's it's really tough to trust him. His uh you know his targets per route run are incredible. His athleticism on the field looked great. He was one of my favorite guys this off season to target for where he was going. But how can you trust a player that has had so much trouble being able to play football? Can't trust. Can't trust. But will still be the highest drafted Giants wide receiver. And you're injury prone until you're not. You know, it's kind of the the way we talk about it on this show of guys starting their career, can't stay on the field, and then they just go a stretch of five years and missing one game a year or so. He has the skills, but his body just – it doesn't seem to like professional well, football. And a lot of those are soft tissue issues. You know, the shoulders, like, okay, you know, that could be a, a, a freak occurrence, you know, like when uh, Keenan lacerated his – uh spleen kidney or, kidney yes um whereas the, he's had the quad uh, a, uh the hamstring yeah the oblique a lot of uh soft tissue issues the report six days ago was that he was moving well at practice but won't play in the preseason game so we'll see so we'll at, see if he's okay by week one at this point you're in you know you're in free freeville of your draft you're in the double digits are you going Tony, or are you taking Wandale Robinson, the rookie? I'm probably taking Tony. Okay, still? Yeah. Jay? Uh, yeah, I'll go with 
Tony. Okay. It is close. What right. about you? Is it Tony, Tony, Tony? <laughs> I lean Wandale at this point. Oh, man. I think Wandale will have a season a lot like Rondale. Probably. That's not good. Maybe. But he has the potential, if yeah. there are injuries, to pile up receptions. It's yeah. just, you know. I mean, I'll, I'll go with the arguments you had laid Who's out. Who's taller, Andy. Wandale or Rondale? Uh, that's a good question. I'm probably about the same. Because Wan Wandale's think, not a big guy. I think Wandale's, for memory, 5'8", and Rondale's 5'7". Mm, okay. Uh, do I need to hit the panic alarm on, five, Dar on Darren Waller? 5'11". Who's five? No, no, neither I'm, one of those I, guys I'm are five. I'm seeing Jason is spot on, 5'8", and 5'7". Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, you need to hit the panic alarm here. <laughs> Josh McDaniels does not feel comfortable making a prediction on Darren Waller's status for week one. He has practiced one time since the end of July for the Las Vegas Raiders. There are rumors that maybe it's contract related. Thoughts? I think those are Ooh. called hopes. That's juicy. Um, I, uh, you hope it is contract related because he missed a bunch of time. He came back and then... We thought, oh, great, he's back, so we can have a little bit more confidence drafting him. And then he's missing again with a hamstring issue. If this is the same, if it's a reoccurrence of the same injury, that is a big deal after rest. The, those are the things that, you know, last year in the tips and tricks episode are the things to remember. We wrote down all the guys who missed the vast majority of camp last year, and they were basically universal busts. This guy has not participated in anything but, like, two days of uh, the team drills this entire offseason program. So I personally, I mean, I wasn't drafting him really. I, I don't like most of the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round tight ends from a game theory strategy point of view, but he is definitely not being drafted by me now. Yeah, I was okay with him, but with all of this just breaking and such a negative fashion for the draft. I've I have moved him down, and like he's he's behind Dalton Schultz in my projections. Now. You, you know what it does do though, and it's worth bringing up is it 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 moves Hunt uh, it moves yes yes Hunter Renfro Hunter Renfro up because my yep. worry here was well Hunter Renfro dominated last year when he was the only guy. Now you bring in Devonte Adams, you still have Waller, but if Waller is struggling to get on the field, and Renfro is a two. That he's hard to cover, especially and, if you're trying to deal with Devontae Adams over there. Did you guys see the the clip? I, yeah, it's Derwin James. It was, okay, that's yeah, who it was? He was on the Pivot podcast with Ryan Clark, and Ryan Clark was basically asking him you know, some questions about the hardest players to cover, and it was like the most nonchalant concession that Hunter Renfro is like in that well, group. He started with Tyreek. Yeah, he's, he's like, like, he's Tyreek, like Tyreek Hill, Hunter uh, Renfro. Yeah. <laughs> and then the host is like, Wait, whoa, 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 <laughs> back up. Hunter Renfro and he's like the encyclopedia salesman yeah. like <laughs> yeah and then James like oh uh, yeah he's, he's different he's really good yeah he says he's different Jalen Waddle has missed most of the last two weeks with an undisclosed injury Yikes. more of a concern for me uh is that it's a new system with Mike McDaniel and they're you know he's missing valuable time to build a rapport uh and to learn that system when Tyreek Hill is out there balling out every single day he, I believe somebody saw him uh, on the side of practice with a wrap on his leg. Yep. So we're waiting to hear if Jalen Waddle will be good to go for week one. Another player we're keeping our eyes on. Yep. It's certainly, uh, this is not everything for Jalen Waddle. Great player, but it does move the the draft confidence. Tyreek Hill gets bumped up slightly, and Waddle gets moved down a little bit. Now, we're sure this wasn't a cell phone in his sock? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. Unless it's like an old Zach Morris sized phone. You're going to start seeing all NFL players keeping their cell phones in their sock to throw off the opposing <laughs> team on who's injured. Uh, all right, let's 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 move on to the bus. Bus. All right, Mike, why don't you kick it off with, all right. with one that I just don't like? That That's fine. Uh and it is David Montgomery of the Chicago Bears, currently the running back 18 going in the back of the third round on Sleeper, all, a.k.a. your your home league type of ADP. And it, this this is not a – I'm saying David Montgomery, oh, he's a bust because he's a bad player. 
Not at all. This is all about playing the game of fantasy football and where he is being drafted. We have a lot of unknowns for him. We have a new coaching regime in Chicago. They did not draft David Montgomery. They have not extended David Montgomery to this point. Uh, you have the new OC, Luke Getze. Is, he's calling plays for the first time, and he's coming down from Green Bay, which was a two-running back system. Uh, so will we see more of the running back by committee approach? That's a that's a huge unknown. A lot of David Montgomery's fantasy value, on top of him being good and being able to take uh, advantage of his opportunity, is the opportunity was so massive for him under head coach Matt Nagy. What we know about Khalil Herbert, though, he was drafted late, but he did see an opportunity last year when David Montgomery missed a couple games, and in those games he averaged 22 touches uh, per game for the month stretch where Montgomery went out and had two running back one performances against Green Bay and Tampa Bay. And if you do remember, back when he played against Tampa Bay, this was like a, well, it seemed, if he feels like the free square, do you pick up Khalil Herbert and play him because you know he's going to get a bunch of volume. But he's playing against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who I don't want my really good running backs playing against because they were so dominant at shutting down fantasy running backs. And Khalil Herbert had himself a day. The offensive line currently ranked 31st by Pro Football Focus. They were bottom five in points scored last year. They seem to be trusting the process on their offensive side of the football, really not going after it. I mean, like the the wide receiver additions have been very lackluster. They drafted uh, Valus Jones, who I think is like a 25-year-old rookie where the odds are up against him. And, you just, and then on top of that, you now have – the full Justin Fields situation where we know that a rushing quarterback, it can take production away from from basically everybody else on the field because every time Justin Fields runs the ball, there's a down. There's an opportunity that, that one of the skill players did not get. So I am concerned about that running back 18 position. I think he can I think he can still finish, you know, in the twenties, which is not a catastrophic move, but when in the third round, when you are bypassing some of the top tier wide receivers who are available to you, I think it's a bad draft move. You got the new coaching staff. He's a dead zone running back, which we know from years and years of fantasy football. The running backs in the dead zone are there for a reason because they just you get the good running backs are taken, and then because of the uh, the, the necessity of the position, running backs who shouldn't be there just get pushed. They get pulled up into mm -hmm. the top of the draft compared to wide receivers. So people are afraid of not having a running back. Exactly. So they, they look and they take the next best running back available over a known great wide receiver. It, so it, I it. have, those are my concerns that David Montgomery just won't return his value in the draft. Jason, I'm curious your thoughts on him. Once he came back after the injury last year, almost on pace for 400 touches, 68 receptions. The, the pass catching is where I feel like his baseline will be safe. Do you well, agree the, with the thought that he might, you know, be below where he was the past couple of years? Yes, I agree that it could happen because there's a new coaching staff and there is no, you know, you talk about, oh, he came back last year and was on pace for 400. Well, that was with a completely different coaching staff, a different, uh, you know, offensive coordinator and uh, play caller, everything. So we have no idea how they will utilize this, whether there, is there will any be chance a, it can be better. A committee because Matt Nagy has not exactly been revered sure absolutely there's a chance it can be better uh the way that I view it is my, you know you talk about the range of outcomes it could be far worse it could be a little better but I think probability wise what's going to happen is you've got a very good player in David Montgomery who will be decent for fantasy but I think he will be slightly just a little bit worse because he'll see it a little bit more first and second down work. I do think he's pretty much locked in as the passing downs guy. Uh, he's a great uh, pass protector, and Khalil Herbert, that's probably his biggest weakness. All right, I'm going to go with Josh Jacobs running back for the Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah. And the vibes are bad right now for Josh Jacobs. Um, this is a player that has had production through volume over the past few years, especially – in a system where John Gruden was willing to just hand the ball off in each and every situation possible, especially around the goal line, 
They didn't have a Devontae Adams weapon around the goal line in years past. And look, they didn't commit to Josh Jacobs. They did not uh, pick up his fifth-year option. We have a decent history of first-round running backs who didn't have their fifth-year option picked up and how they performed in their fourth year, which is what it is for Josh Jacobs. It hasn't been pretty. You have Leonard Fournette and Sonny Michelle and Rashad Penny where these were not prolific outputs. Um, that's not a huge sample size, but it's also indicative. Look, if the team wanted to make him the future, then I think they would have negotiated that contract. You bring in Brandon Bolden, Amir Abdullah. You have a history of RBBC with Josh McDaniels and the New England system. And you have really what I think the biggest point here is you have the ability to go elsewhere with Adams, with Renfro, with Waller, with Abdullah, who, you know, Brandon Bolden, more trusted in pass protection. I don't know if this team is really willing to say, Josh Jacobs, you're our guy, as opposed to you're a guy in this backfield. So my, I have my concerns. Uh, early fifth-round pick right now. I know uh, Judge Giamatti himself is a pretty big Josh Jacobs supporter this year. But you, I also didn't mention Zamir White. You know, another sure. uh, fourth round draft pick that they brought in, a big bruising back that basically I think if this team thinks it can get what Josh Jacobs has been giving them out of other players, they'll do it and move on from Josh Jacobs at the end of the year. I completely agree with that last sentence, and I do expect them to move on or they would have picked up his option. I don't think they will resign him, but I he's on the roster now, and when they are needing to score and keep up in this division, He's their best running back. He is a good running back. I see it kind of similar a little bit to David Montgomery in the sense that these are these are quality players who aren't assured of a big volume going in this year with new coaching staffs. But I I would at least say that Josh Jacobs is a little bit cheaper. And I I view the Raiders offense. We talked about this on the party room last night. Um, I view the Raiders offense as being better more improved they're probably going to score more points regardless of whether the Raiders win or lose more games going forward so there is maybe an opportunity for more scoring but uh, obviously the transactions they've made bringing in so many other running backs and not picking up his fifth year option is not it doesn't bode well for Josh Jacobs uh, some some wild stats here for these backups like you know quote backups for the for the Raiders uh Andy did you because I was trying to pull up this Amir Abdullah stat did you mention that Brandon Bolden actually led all running backs in fantasy points on third down. No, I, I didn't even realize like, that was that's, true. That's an absolutely absurd stat. And then and he pursued it. Like he leaves New England and then he just goes and signs the guy he used to do that. And then after Amir Abdullah was traded over to or he went over to the Carolina Panthers. Now I mean they needed running back help as you recall uh their superstar uh Christian McCaffrey lost time. But once he got on the field, he was averaging five targets a game. Amir Abdullah finished the season with just as many targets as Jonathan Taylor, just as many targets as Javante Williams, one more target than Antonio Gibson. Like, Amir Abdullah was so involved in the passing game, and you just – we don't realize it because that's kind of all he did for them, but, like, he was being used like that because he has those chops. Yeah, my, uh, you know, you're you have McDaniel's who basically said, "Yeah, I want Bolden, Abdullah, and Zamir White." Yes, and we're going to fill out this room. Um, I I would bet my life that David Montgomery has more targets and receptions than Josh Jacobs does this year. Yeah, so that, that, I that's no the, with that's that. my biggest concern about drop off. You don't have a problem with Andy betting his life, Mike? No, I don't. Putting because that it's not my life. Okay. He didn't. He didn't bet mine. Fifty percent. Yeah, oh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> That's pretty strong. A pretty strong statement. Yeah. Um, <laughs> quick break and back with Jason's bust. All right, Jason, you chose the running back position as well. Tell us why yeah. Jonathan Taylor's your hey, bust. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hey. Well, it is it is funny. We we pick these all independently, but you can see that there's a theme here. All three of these running backs we've picked as bust options this year are dead zone running backs. The running backs that go between rounds three through seven, 
Uh, we did a study last year on those to kind of see how do they do, and more than two-thirds of the running backs drafted in rounds three for seven hurt your squad. They either don't meet their PPG uh, expectation <laughs> or they or they full-on bust. That was, uh, that was a strange pause there. <laughs> did, did, you not, did you not hear yourself? Rewind. How long do you think that pause was? <laughs> How long do you believe tape? that that was? Well, you don't I, want to rewind that. I, no, 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 no. You I'm, said I'm PP. Rewinding it in my mind, I hear it now. Yeah, you said PP. Then you did the alphabet in your head and got to G later. I mean, that was. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, they don't meet their. They don't meet their PP. G. That's what you said. Yes. Yeah, well, uh, that's what I. Yeah, and and uh, and I stand by. Oh my it. gosh. <laughs> Anyways, I do think... What a spot to just brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, that's how I'm going to start saying PPR <laughs> leagues. Oh, um, boy. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, if you play you, Jason. in PPR <laughs> leagues, um, maybe Cam Akers would be more or less valuable. But here's the reason why. So, Cam Akers, 23 years old, exceptional talent coming out of college. All of us <laughs> loved him, loved his tape. And now he's on the Los Angeles Rams with Sean McVay. There's a lot of reasons that he is pushed up higher than these other two running backs in ADP. He's currently the running back 17 uh, going in the back of the third round because there's a lot of excitement that if he is the guy, right, like Sean McVay has always used that one back system. You had Todd Gurley have so much value for years. And so you hope that Cam Akers is over this devastating Achilles injury and he is ready to go as the dude. And if that happens, he is a screaming deal at the back of the third round. However, there are a couple things really working against him. First and foremost, this injury is one where we still do not have a successful single sample of a running back coming back off of this injury to good fantasy success. Now, after a couple years from the injury, we've had Deonta Foreman still play ball, uh, Marlon Mack is playing football, but he's running behind fourth round, you know, rookie running yeah, backs. Yeah, you're right not now. targeting like that kind of output. Exactly. And so you saw him come back super early from the injury last year, which was impressive, but then he, he sucked. He was like two and a half yards per carry. Yeah, not as impressive. Not as impressive. 3.3 yards per touch, so very inefficient. And you do have the issue, uh, you know, you, you hear a lot of like, oh, he wasn't efficient, but he still kept getting the rock in the playoffs. They trust him, but it's like, well, yeah, Dar Daryl Henderson wasn't there. So that's the other guy they trust. McVeigh literally quote, quoted a couple weeks ago of saying, I look at it as if we have two starting backs. And Sarah Bishop, the ESPN uh, Rams reporter, said, I don't think it's a given that Akers will start the season as the Rams' true RB1. Uh, the, uh, Akers and Henderson are both going to split this backfield. If Akers is not recovered from a devastating injury and he's not the full-time dude, he's not paying off at the running back 17 draft cost. I have him currently as the running back 26. Uh, I, 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 I love the talent. I hope he breaks out. I don't think it, it's going to happen. And if you look at – like there's a couple running backs I prefer that are going later than him like Travis Etienne and Brees Hall. But really in this range – Michael Pittman, DJ Moore, Mike Williams, Cortland mm -hmm. Sutton, these guys are these guys are exciting high probability hits in the in the same range going after him. I think it's too big a risk for me at that draft cost to go in on uh an, an early Achilles running back injury. Well, and where's Daryl Henderson being drafted? Oh, he's nowhere. He, yeah, double digits. So I mean that shows you that there's a, a misunderstanding of what's going to happen in that backfield. Uh, it, beyond the reporters that you mentioned, um, I've heard from several that are positive that the philosophy in that backfield has changed and that they're 100% committed to both players. And Daryl Henderson's been very effective in limited amounts of work without injuries, you know. So I think they want to keep the tread off of both the tires. Um, how many tires do two guys have? I mean, that's like, is that four it tires total? That's it's two just, tires per person. Does it? Do you put a tire on like the hands? I think you got to rotate the. Oh, because then it'd be four per. Well, yeah, I don't think you get hand tires. No. I don't think that's right because we're we're we walk we're upright. Bipedal. We're bipedal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. by wheel, so by wheel -dle. <laughs> So uh, we're four four total tires, yeah. okay. and you rotate them to keep the tread. Do they wearing evenly? Do they change? They do rotate, yeah. But I'm saying, like, does does Henderson? No, they don't get swap with each other. Death? They rotate okay. them between okay. left and right foot. Yeah, Henderson's got he's rolling on dubs. He's got twenties 
So I, I don't think Cam Akers yeah. uh, can expensive can uh, put those on. But the one thing I will say, <laughs> bringing up kind of the average draft price, I I looked in, on Sleeper. Henderson's going in the eleventh round. If you do like a little mental exercise and say, well, both these guys have dealt with injuries. They're their short career so far. So they both have injury risk, but if Henderson was gone and he was out of the way, great opportunity for Cam Akers, but you're not sure he's back over the Achilles injury. If the opposite happens and Cam Akers goes down and there's great opportunity for Henderson, I'm almost more confident that Henderson would be better as the solo back than I would be if Cam was there and one of these guys is being drafted in the 11th round. Yeah, it's something to pay attention to because you can grab a Sutton and then get Henderson later as a dart throw. Uh, there are s some backfields like that. All right, into the values. Values. So, I mean, it's right in the name. These are players that represent a spectacular draft day value. Uh, you're not necessarily supposed to be reaching for these players, but um, these are guys that have a potential to drop to where they shouldn't be dropping and could be a steal for your fantasy team. Mike, I love yours. I'm going, oh, that's good because you did not like the bus. Well, I have a contractual obligation yeah. to David Montgomery. You're, to, you're a big Monty guy. I defend him. That's fair. But um, he's a full Monty guy. I'm a full oh, Monty. I, I do go full Monty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, but Mike, I'm all especially in. Especially in PP. Yeah. Oh, oh, there it is. There it is. My value pick is Damian Pierce, rookie running back from the Houston Texans on sleeper going in the back of the ninth as the running back 39. And by all accounts from the preseason, it looks like Damian Pierce is the starting running back for this team. I get it. It's the Houston Texans. Gross. They're not going to be great. But you have to factor in, like, maybe the Houston Texans, they can be slightly better. Like, crazy stuff happens in the NFL every single year. And if they're just a little bit better than you expect and you have their starting running back in the ninth round, that is a tremendous value. The draft capital on Damian Pierce wasn't fantastic. But, again, this this was a, an interesting year in the draft for these running backs of of players that on on film and even, like, statistically – they were their profiles were interesting, but they just they're dropping in the NFL draft. Pierce doesn't. He didn't have a lot of production. Yeah, he doesn't have the production profile to back yeah. it up. But in Florida, I mean, Florida just they use their players strangely. Like yeah, it's super muggy, very difficult to get production. But like Kadarius Tony, a really strange, like not a great production profile, but did enough for NFL teams that he was a first round draft pick. Uh, currently, the competition on the Houston Texans. The aforementioned Marlon Mack recovering from the Achilles injury uh, from a year ago. And then Sexy Rexy, Rex Burkett. Love Rex Burkett. But at this point of his career, you love him five, sexy. five yeah. years ago. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's, yeah. Like, he's a fun guy to root for. He's just for. Rexy now. Yeah, he's just, yeah, he is. Uh, Dad yeah. bod Rexy. <laughs> <laughs> Which could be, hey, it could be sexy. I, I would like that dad bod. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, but watching Damian Pierce, actually just watching the, the tape of him in Florida, He's he's has juice. He's he's twitchy. And then we saw him in the preseason making some really strong moves, like making NFL defenders look silly, making really good cuts. And then look at what the team wants to do. Like they've brought Lovey Smith, they moved him from defensive coordinator to the head coach. That's a pretty high team move. Tim Kelly remains the offensive coordinator, so you still have uh you you still have the same play caller there and last year they were tied for 10th in neutral rush rate. So when the game is they close, they want to run so they, bad. They when the game is close, they want to run. In their four wins last year, they averaged 36 rushing attempts per game as a team. Like they want to establish it and they had some crazy wins last year. They beat the Tennessee Titans and they beat the Los Angeles Chargers. So it's finding a starting running back at that point of the NFL draft or the your fantasy draft is like that that is absolutely golden that getting that volume for essentially free I don't expect Damian Pierce to be outrageously great I don't think he's going to be a top 15 running back but he's going to be a guy on your bench that at any point you can you can just plop him into your flex or or as your just running back too when plop you plop him in when, when you need some help and then 
there is the possibility that he is just he was overlooked by the NFL and the Texans are slightly better than we expect. So finishing in the top 24, I don't think is impossible for Damian Pierce. I think I know Jason's going to disagree, so I'll I'll just put an exclamation point on the positives and Jason can share his negatives. I think he'll be a star. I think Damian Pierce is going to be a star in the NFL level. I think the way he runs, uh, the way he ran in Florida, look, like you said, not a lot of total production and yardage, but he scored 13 times on 100 touches. He runs like a bat out of hell. Yes. And I think that aggression with the team's commitment to the run uh, and, and improvements. I mean, we, we all praise Lovey Smith for what he could do with the defensive personnel that he had last year. I think that there are going to be some steps forward there that keep Damian Pierce on the field. And this is a this is part a film thing where it's just calling your shot on a player and what you believe about them. I think he's going to have great success in year one. Yeah, I, I don't really have much negative to say on this. I mean, he's being drafted as the running back 40. I look at the guys going in in his range, you know, James Robinson dealing with his own yeah. uh, Achilles injury, Michael Carter, a backup, Alexander Madison, Isaiah Spiller. These are backups. If you're taking a shot at a guy, I have no problem with Damian Pierce. I think where my negativity comes in is more the long-term outlook because, you know, we talked about this a little bit on the party room in a dynasty league. Because he's a fourth-round draft pick, if he comes out and has a really good year, there's no guarantee that he's just not still replaced. Like the way that Travis Etienne was drafted when James Robinson was awesome because they, they didn't have a lot invested to him. Same that happened to Philip Lindsay. Same that happened last year to Michael Carter, a fourth-round rookie, was very good, and then they go draft Brees Hall. So it's, it's more like the long-term outlook for Damian Pierce, I think, gets a little out of control in Dynasty. But he looks good, and he's got the opportunity. Obviously, it's a bad team. Still could be a running back by committee that he leads. But, I mean, I don't see other running backs where he's going that I would prefer to take a shot on. Okay. Adam Thielen is my value yes. pick. Yes. Uh, what do you think, Jason? I <laughs> hope he is right. I do not want to be caught holding the bag when he ages out. That's fine because me and Andy are – We'll hold together. It. We're holding yeah. this bag tight. I, and look, Mike, I might let go halfway through the year. I'm not <laughs> sure. But look, he, he's just being left for dead with all the optimism on the Minnesota Vikings offense. He is a historically great red zone target. All the personnel, you know, we have stability with the quarterback wide receiver combination around the red zone. Um, over the last two years, wide receivers with more touchdowns than Adam Thielen. It's Mike Evans and Devontae Adams. That's it. Um, 21 targets from ins inside the 10-yard line, 16 touchdowns on those 21 targets. So not only do they just do it, but this isn't like they try to target Julio Jones with Matt Ryan and then it just doesn't work out. It like almost always works out. And you have a lot of optimism around this Kevin O'Connell offense. Um, I have a lot of confidence in Kevin O'Connell in general. I yes. think he's going to bring a lot of um, – consistency to the offensive side of the football and in particular the passing game and I think Adam Thielen still has greatness in him I now he may start really strong and you may use the age argument to say hey it's time to cash in if he starts strong and then move on from him for the second half of the year I'm comfortable with that we have seen injuries to Adam Thielen especially in the second half of the season but this was the wide receiver seven in fantasy football last year through the first 12 weeks. The wide receiver seven. And on pace for 97, 1,016 touchdowns. You're now seeing him drafted as the wide receiver 29. If he has anything left, he beats his ADP. And everything out of camp is that he has everything left, that he looks more like his previous self, not less. And you have the confidence of Kirk Cousins. So until that drop-off happens before my eyes, the cost in drafts is so minimal to put Adam Thielen on your roster. He's the kind of player where somebody else in your league is going to take him and start him against you, and you're going to roll out your your top two-round wide receivers, and then Thielen's going to beat you in week one, and you're going to say that's not fair. <laughs> yeah. But that's kind of the situation you have with Adam Thielen, and I think – you know, you got to you draft him as the thirtieth wide receiver. He's not even a wide receiver two. So Sean McVay, if if you recall, over the off season there was some uh, whispers from the bushes, some rumors abound that Sean McVay might retire and go take 
a gigantic bag of money from Amazon to be a part of their new Thursday night football program. And that ended up not happening. And we heard later that Sean McVay shared if he had retired, Kevin O'Connell was the most likely replacement for him for the Rams. Like he has like, he talks up Kevin O'Connell so much. And so it's like the Rams system, that offensive system is coming over to the Minnesota Vikings. And if Yeah, you brought if, this up. If the other KJ day. Osborne, the the third wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings, if he can take the step up that is being reported, and like I mean, he's he's a younger guy, twenty five, he's he's got some wheels. We he's saw good. Him. I think he, he passes the film test. Yeah, we we saw him last year hit on uh, a number of, of really big plays. But when they go to three wide receivers, I think that there is a chance that Adam Thielen gets put into the slot, which that is where Cooper Cup dominates. You have such a mismatch when you have a skilled route runner and and a gigantic human in there. When they they that's not normal for the NFL. Usually, your slot wide receiver is your your inferior, your third guy. They're smaller, but the like certain teams are figuring out. Well, I can really get a mismatch here if I put my big guy and I get an easy touchdown. Arif Hassan of the Athletic did report that they are clearly committed to three wide receiver sets as the base offensive formation in Minnesota as well. So you will see. I mean, that is a little side. Like Osborne could be a value too. I I think he yeah. is. I mean, I I think that the Minnesota Vikings offense is one that I've been targeting a lot. Kirk Cousins is very undervalued in drafts right now. KJ Osborne could really surprise by being a more integral part of this offense than you think. And keep in mind, they're getting Big Irv Smith back as well. But yeah. but a lot of those reasons are also little fears for Adam Thielen. Being like, okay, well, if the younger K.J. Osborne and Irv Smith and obviously Justin Jefferson is the one, you did see some decline, obviously, around the goal line, little routes. I mean, you're not going to stop Adam Thielen. The reason he was the wide receiver seven in the beginning of the year was because he was just getting touchdowns all over the place, and that's great, but those are less sticky, less predictive. If you look at, like, his yards per catch, you know, he's a spent his whole career as a 13.2 type of guy always at least 12 and a half or above last year was 10.8 he's playing at 32 it's kind of a scary number for wide receivers that aren't first ballot hall of famers so if he if he is just you know I know the reports are he's he's like the younger version of himself no he's not <laughs> like that those reports are stupid to me because it, he's not a younger version of himself and we hear it all the time that's not to say he doesn't look great in camp and Hooray, he looks healthy, looks active, and, and that you can't take that. But, like, he's 32. He's, he didn't go back in time, and no one ever does. So, at some point, he will slow down and be a little bit easier to guard. And that those are my fears. But, obviously, he's a great wide receiver, and you're not spending too much if he's the 30th wide receiver off the board. All right, Jason, time for your value pick. Oh, my um, value has no limit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Unlimited. There it is. There it is. Yeah, I tried to set you up. I struggled. Yeah, I struggled to find it. Uh, that's all right. You can hit it again. Because... Or I thought you were just doing like a really big space between your <laughs> sentences. Yeah. <laughs> Let's. <laughs> I I could make that joke for days. Um, Russell Wilson is my value pick. I think he is <clears throat> Wilson. such a value in drafts right now. I know he is cheesy. He's a true corn puff and a real square. <laughs> I don't want to hang out with him anytime soon, but he is a darn good quarterback. And for the first time that we've never really seen him unleashed in the Pete Carroll system, he has an opportunity to be the play caller at the line, to air it out, to use a really good receiving core in Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy and uh, Albert Aguaben on two good running backs that he can pass the ball to. Uh, K.J. Hamler with his 4-3-2 speed. Yeah, they're loaded. They are loaded, and if you just look at the past – Russ cooks up quarterback one numbers every single year. Uh, before this last year where he was injured, his quarterback finishes on his career are quarterback 11, 8, 3, 3, 9, 1, 9, 4, 6. He's currently being drafted as the quarterback nine. He's being drafted basically at his floor. And so as a value, to me, I see a group of, wide, a group of quarterbacks that I really want one of. They are the kind of middle round. They're not too early. The opportunity cost doesn't cost that much. 
Jalen Hurts, uh, Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, and Russell Wilson is kind of the last guy for me. Now, it gets scary in a draft because when he's the last of a tier. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. It's, that's why Would I you up, reach for him based on this view where you're going sixth round Russell? Because you want to, you don't want to be in that situation where you're like, "Oh, I'll just count on Russell in the seventh round," and then you get there, he goes in the sixth ahead of you, and then you're like, oh, "I've got uh, somebody else that yeah. I don't like." I think it's a dangerous gamble that's worth taking because in the sixth round is where you know if, if you're there, I'm not going to take him over Jalen Hurts just because of the rushing upside. Russell Wilson's n no longer going to be a 600 yard rusher. Uh, he still has mobility, and he'll add uh, to fantasy on the ground, but he's not going to be Jalen Hurts. So if I'm in the sixth, I'm going to take those other guys, but let Russ drop to the seventh. He's a great value. You know he's going to come through. Uh, one of the highest odds for MVP betting. and No argument from me. Yeah, I think he's a, great, me. he's a great value. <laughs> Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. All right, so every week, uh, you know, leading up to the season, we've been doing these segments where we're uh, talking best ball, we're talking about underdog, and uh, honestly, this one, this is more of a an observation here. Just kind of, we, we've got the data, it is pouring in. The more you know. And this is, this is information, we're not sure exactly which way to go with it just yet, but so listen. Rookie wide receivers are breaking best ball. And what we know factually about rookie wide receivers, not all of them are Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase. We just we have we happen to have two guys that came in and just you know just stormed the field and were crazy good for the NFL and fantastic for fantasy football. And you know we've had some surges: Jalen Waddell, Amon Ross, St. Brown. But over the last seven years for best ball, the average ADP for a first round wide receiver. Is the eleventh round. The average ADP for a second round wide receiver was in the fifteenth round. And this is the past seven years. And now with what has happened with those just handful of elite outliers, the ADP of the rookie wide receivers is shooting to the moon. Drake London. We all like Drake London. Cool like excellent prospect. The first I love wide, the Drake. Yeah. Well for the first wide receiver off the board. And he is going as the third highest rookie wide receiver ever for best ball. Sky Moore, currently ADP of 90th. That is the highest second round pick ever for ADP for a, for a rookie wide receiver. Uh, George Pickens, the third highest second round ADP ever. Like Romeo Dobbs, the new hotness, the highest fourth round rookie wide receiver ADP in best ball history. The ADPs of the rookies are just out of control if you so i guess this is a tip for if you truly like rookie wide receivers you can't go back now but looking into the future those adps are much much lower back earlier in the offseason like right around even before the draft you know who the good wide receivers are if you're locked in if you're sticking around with the fantasy footballers all year we're going to let you know who the good players are going to be that's when you can really capitalize on the adps but at this point I mean, you're really, really paying up. And you're not going back to the glory days anytime soon of being yes. able to sneak these guys under your roster because Jefferson and Chase have ruined it. I exactly. And, and, and some because of, the guys, of the power of if you did get them late, you won. Yes. Yeah, so uh, on average, we've seen 4.6 total rookie wide receivers meet or exceed their win rate expectation, but it, which – Kind of sounds like we're getting a little too overconfident in what these rookies are going to do based off of where we are taking them in the underdog uh, 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 best ball draft. So just you know, take that information, do with it what you will. It's just it's getting a little it's getting a little dicey there with that ADP over absolute known commodities. All right, that was best ball breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. Start playing on Underdog today. Heck, if you start playing on underdog, you'll probably end up in a draft with Jason because he is just constantly in a draft. Uh, they'll match your first deposit up to $100 if you use the code BALLER. So make sure you use that code so you can get free money. Yes. Free money's all right. Thank you for reminding me, Andy. I am 
indeed on the clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have no doubt. I, I glance over and I'm you are... also one pick away, two picks away, two picks away, five picks away, etc. Also, and and uh, to be clear, have you made all the right picks this year? Oh yeah, they're a hundred percent win rate. And okay. it just say like guilty as charged. Uh, I just did a best ball tournament, so Drake London's seventy third ADP. I took him at eighty. Like I, I am guilty of this as well of getting really excited for what the rookie wide receivers could do. UltimateDraftKit.com, head over there. You'll get all of our uh, detailed stat projections on every single fantasy football relevant player, 100-plus uh, player profile videos, uh, the cheat sheet creator so you can bring it to your draft and you can mark players. Um, you can take keepers off the board. Uh, actually, yesterday, I know, I know it sounds kind of funny, but yesterday I redid our link of record in the UDK and like pulled out all the keepers, marked yep. all my favorite because we got our draft coming up next Friday. I wanted to keep it fresh, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I've got it all prepped up and ready to go. About time. I mean, I've, I've been there for weeks, brother. Well, I know. I wanted fresh eyes on some of these players. We talk about them for so long that I just had a day where I wanted to just go through and say, you know what? I need to remember that James Robinson's sitting there in the last round. I need to remember about yes. you know, some yes, of these. You do. Yeah, yeah, remember that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Please draft him. I, I will, I'll take James Robinson in the last round. I will take any potential starting yeah, running back in, I in the I last would as round. well. I mean, my bet against Cam Akers isn't that no one can ever come back from an Achilles. It's that I don't want to make that bet in the third round. Fair. James Robinson was already slow. He'll be fine. <laughs> He'll be fine. <laughs> he, used, he was a little twitchier than like the, the explosive. His long no, speed No, he's is going bad. rookie of the year on this Achilles. Don't worry about it. Ooh. Yeah, oh, it's going to be more powerful. It's going to be the flash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, check that out at ultimatedraftkit.com. We'll be back with a mock draft episode tomorrow. Oh, baby. mock a lock -a ding dong <laughs> We'll talk to you then. We will. Stay safe, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.